We told you that the dominoes were going to fall for the Georgia Bulldogs on the recruiting trail, and that's exactly what's happened earlier this week. They landed a commitment from three-star tight end Colton Heinrich, and uh, this morning they landed a commitment from a massive Massive offensive lineman Marcus Harrison out of New York. This kid uh, was in Georgia or at Georgia in Athens this past weekend for the scavenger hunt weekend. And from what I was told, he measured in at 6'8", 330 pounds. The dude is just massive. Just a three-star. No Georgia fans are not going to like that. But he is big, he's physical, and he is full of potential. He got the green light to uh, commit to Stacey Searles and the Georgia Bulldogs, and he did not wait very long to jump on that opportunity. It's a golden one uh, because he doesn't have the crazy offers. He doesn't have Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson. He's got a few. He's got Wisconsin, uh, a few other you know, Power Five you know, programs offered him a scholarship. But Georgia was his biggest offer by a mile from what I've gathered. And he had the opportunity to jump on board and join this class. And again, it didn't take long for him to realize, hey, I can play for the back-to-back -back national championships uh, you know, team in Athens, Georgia, and I'm going to jump on that. So not a guy who I think is going to play early. This is a project, but I think it's going to be a fun project for Stacey Searles. You can't teach size. This kid has it. Size, length, he's got a seven-foot you know, wingspan going on. So the tools are there. He's physical, he's nasty, he you know finishes his blocks, he blocks until the whistle opens up a lot of holes in the run game. Still, you know, needs to work on his pass protection. Um, doesn't play against the best competition up there in New York. So there's definitely gonna be a learning curve as far as trying to block these elite pass rushers that he's gonna see not only at practice at Georgia, but in the SEC as well. So you know, the potential is there, but he's going to have to sit and learn and develop a little bit, work on his technique. Um, but he's a big time run blocker up there. They run behind him a good bit and he just buries guys, whether he buries them into the ground or he's shoving them, you know, out of bounds and eliminating defenders from the play. So you watch the film and he probably should be ranked a little higher. Um, but Georgia wants him on board and they were able to get him on board. So. They've got two commitments right now on the offensive line, Malachi Tolliver and now Marcus Harrison. Uh, I know a lot of Georgia fans will be asking, you know, where are the five stars? Where are the four stars at this point? I've said for a while, uh, many times on dog posts that there's no Andrew Thomas, Jamari Sawyer, Tate Ratledge, Marius Mims guy in this class. Daniel Calhoun is the best offensive lineman in the state. Uh, and I think Georgia sits in a really good spot for him. Brandon Baker, number one offensive tackle in the country, still not a five star from the outlets that I'm looking at this morning. He's going to be in camp or on campus in town for an official visit in late June. So, you know, the prospects are still out there. There's still plenty of targets out there and they want to take five. And when you take five offensive linemen, especially in a class like this 2024 class, that's just not great across the country. It's not great in Georgia. It's not great nationally. When you take five, you're going to have some three stars in there that you say, okay, let's take this kid who's big and physical and has a lot of raw tools. Let's develop him. Let's get him to that point. Xavier Trust, who's going to be a starter, a multi-year starter at Georgia, he was a three-star from Rhode Island, I believe. Dylan Weber actually went to go watch him play. Uh, Devin Willick, three-star kid from New Jersey. He made a big-time impact and started you know, multiple games as well. So you can take a big physical offensive lineman with three stars next to his name and turn him into an SEC caliber lineman. Uh, we've seen it before at Georgia. Now, those guys came in under Sam Pittman and Matt Luke, but Stacey Searles knows what he's doing. A lot of Georgia fans kind of hate on Stacey Searles, and they're probably going to continue to do so as he's bringing in these three stars, but Kirby's cool with it too. You know, they got this guy on campus. You see the size and you see the potential that he could bring if you develop him properly. And they said, you know what? Let's take this kid. Let's get him on board and still focus on these other targets. Now, who are the other targets? That's the other question I'm getting. Um, and again, Brandon Baker is one of them out of modern day high school in California. I think Georgia's got a shot and 247 does have him as a five-star prospect. Uh, Oregon, very much in the mix. I think USC is very much in the mix, but Georgia has a chance to win him over during his official visit. Daniel Calhoun, a guy I think Georgia leads for right now out of Walton. Um, he's massive too, 6'6", about 350. Watched him practice last week. Stacey Searles was there watching Daniel practice as well. Um, Jimothy Lewis out of IMG Academy is a name to know. Uh, Nair Daniels out of New Jersey, 6'6", 340. I've been told that he is high on Stacey Searles' list. He's a 
um, solid mid four star, right? He's, he's a guy that can play for Georgia one day, in my opinion. Um, Marquise Easley, Illinois, uh, six seven three hundred. He's a guy that I've been told Stacy Searles really really likes as well. So they're top targets still out there that he can go get. So it's not like this class is going to be full of three stars. It's not like that. But I will say next year's class in 2025, I know people don't want to look ahead too much, but that's where it's full of massive, massive talent at offensive line. I love Juan Gaston Jr., uh, big tackle out of Westlake. His dad was a tremendous athlete, played at Georgia Tech. I'm higher on Juan Gaston Jr. than all the other outlets. I've said that multiple times. That guy is a five-star in my opinion. And some of these other outlets don't even have him in the top 100 in the country. They're wrong. This kid is elite. And I think George is in a really good spot for him. Josh Petty, um, yeah, Fellowship Christian and Roswell, a big dude. I saw him recently at the uh, Milton Cast game. He was there with some buddies. Great handshake. Dude about broke my hand and he's 16 years old. He's going to be uh, a junior in high school. Looks the part. He is very high on George's board. Um, David Sanders Jr. I've been told uh, an SEC coach told me that he's the best player in the country. I think Georgia sits in a really good spot for him. Mason Short, high four-star tackle from Augusta, commit to Alabama. I think Georgia's going to still pursue him. So next year's class is a class where you could possibly get a Jamari Sawyer type, an Amari Smams, a Broderick Jones, Tate Riley, Cedric Van Prant. There are those type of guys in next year's 25 class, and I expect Georgia to load up there. So no matter what this 24 class looks like, uh, it might not be star-studded or as star-studded as Georgia fans want it to be. It, it's not the end of the world because I do expect them to clean up and you know possibly land multiple five-star offensive linemen in next year's class. So um, I, I, again, I know this is not going to excite a lot of people, you know, uh, a project three-star offensive lineman, but I can tell you that he has SEC caliber size, length, um, he's got plenty of potential, and you do turn on the film and you see why Georgia was interested in him, and they see a, a guy that they could turn into a big-time, talented, probably a guard. I don't see him at, at tackle, but you know, he saw us, again, like I said, some work to do. He's got to work on uh, pass protection, try and do, uh, he's big. So can he block, you know, those BJ Ojolori types, those Leonard Floyd types, long, athletic, Damon Wilson types, who I think is going to be um, a key contributor as a true freshman next year. Um, you know, the Nolan Smiths, kind of the smaller 235, lightning quick off the snap, elite pass rusher types. Can he handle those guys flying off the edge? Um, we'll see. He's got a lot of learning to do, but you know he, he can be a bully right now against uh, you know the players he's going up against. Those defenders, he swallows them up with ease. And they had him on campus this weekend, got the measurables, and gave him the green light to commit. And you know, he again, for the third time I'm saying in this video, it didn't take long for him to realize I've got an opportunity to play for the champs. I'm going to jump on board and be a member of this class. So. Um, I, if you're Dylan Raiola, Ryan Puglisi, you've got to like this massive, massive tackle slash guard who's committed, who is only going to get better. And I think as he practices every day against these big time defensive linemen that Georgia is also bringing in in last year's class and in this one, he's going to get better at practice every day. So he's not going to be thrown into a position where he needs to start year one or year two. So he's got some time to sit and develop, and I think the potential for him to turn into a starter is not you know, out of the realm of possibility. Depending on who they bring in in this class, he's a project, but I think the staff is excited about the project that they have in front of him. I think you know, everyone has an ego, and I think Stacey Searles and the rest of that offensive staff are saying, hey, you know, we've got a big-time project here, a player that we really like who could turn into be a really good player that a lot of people just – missed on and didn't recruit and they want to do that they want to turn this guy into the player they think he can be and I, it, i'm not putting it past the georgia staff to make sure that happens so um make sure you check out double dogs sign up to the newsletter um, i'm pumping out recruiting stories left and right if you're signed up to the newsletter you get an email every day with all the stories that i've written that dean's written um a lot of content out there, uh, plenty of um, recruiting stories that I still have to write later in this video uh, as I get texts about more uh, stuff coming up. If I do my head this way, that's because 
I'm, I'm looking at a text that came through my phone and that's the only way to read it. So um, if you see me do that, it's more often than not, it's important news that I probably have to jump on after this video. But another commitment after a massive, massive recruiting weekend, not wouldn't surprise me at all if another one popped this week or number, you know, another one or two guys publicly goes uh, and commits to Georgia this week or maybe the week after. But June is going to be massive. July is going to be, you know, multiple commitments, multiple commitments going Georgia's way in July. Um, I still think this is going to be the number one recruiting class in the country. I've said that months and months ago. So when it happens, you all remember Matt DeBerry at Dog Post said this was going to happen early, early on. Could be one of the greatest recruiting classes of all time. And I'm not just saying that because I cover Georgia recruiting every day. I really, truly believe it. And Marcus Harrison, three-star right now, would not surprise me if that ranking bumped up a little bit. As more people see him, I think more offers could come in as well. Big, big dude. He's got plenty of size, raw strength, raw potential. And I think there's a chance he could turn into a player who can make an impact on Georgia's offensive line down the road. Guys, thanks for watching this video. As always, really appreciate it. Stay tuned to the next one coming up right now. I will see you over on Dog Post.